Good morning. Hi, this is Birdman Mel coming for the first time live from Birdman's basement. I am really happy that you tuned in today. You're going to like what's going on. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to do some crazy things like, whoops, don't look. I didn't want to give it away. We're going to help you work with your children. Hey, you be quiet down there. Hey, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun things about identifying bird sounds. So it's going to be a great kids program. We are giving away hundreds of dollars of prizes, including, hey, whoops, where are we going here? Yep, the world's best pair of binoculars for birding, in my opinion, from Sheltered, uh, from, uh, Sheltered Wings, the uh, folks that make those. We love those folks. It even has a harness on it. It's got a bag. I mean, it's everything you need to go to the field or use it in your backyard with your children. 170 bucks. You got to stay tuned though, because we're going to ask you a question and you're going to have to get back to us within five minutes at the end. Okay. And Kaylee is posting all the rules and I want to make sure, you know, Birdman and Al can't do this thing without a lot of help. We got Kaylee, we got the marketing, the IT team. And in my office here, I have my executive producer, Miss Becky, my daughter, who's also going to be Vanna and Miss Bev, my wife, who's going to be slipping me your questions and all. And that's the main thing send those questions. We are here to help. If we don't get them all right away, hey, we'll get them later, okay? Hey, I'm using some notes here, and uh, we're going to have money-saving tips, and guess what? I learned you can use both sides of the paper, so that's what we're doing at our business, uh, but uh, we are going to have some quizzes, and uh, we are going to make sure you know that, hey, this is not just about Central Missouri. I love all you folks that are coming to Songbird Station in Columbia, but from now on, we've actually got folks tuning in from all over the U.S. And folks, you need to go to your local independently owned wild bird supplier. Anything you see here, they may not have it all. I got a big old honking warehouse, but they can get it for you. Or they got something really close to the same thing. The other thing I want to tell you is all of us, or not all of us, but an awful big part of us are staying alive because we provide essential feeds and seeds for the animals in your life. So, you know, where you're in a shutdown, many of them, like we are in Columbia, have curbside pickup. You can call ahead to Columbia or to your local store. They can go out, put it in your trunk. They certainly don't want you to row down the window. They'll have gloves on. And many of us are also looking at delivery. We start our delivery this week if you want to uh, have it delivered in the Songbird Station area. And I know many of your local bird stores are doing the same thing. But let's forget the commercial now. But I will hold up some things. Uh, so forgive me, because remember, every, today and from now on, every single thing I hold up, somebody out there is going to win. It's going to be fun and profitable. You will be able to win by just participating. All you got to do is your name automatically gets in some kind of computer deal where it will randomly select people who have texted in a question or a comment. So get involved in your odds of winning go way up. Okay, well, who are we talking about today? We're talking about nesting. One of the uh, things I said was cavities, they're not always a bad thing. You know, if mom told me, oh man, Mel, you didn't brush your teeth enough, you got cavities, I was like in trouble. But in the birding world, cavities are a good thing. So, first question for a nice prize is what group of birds makes many of the cavities that many of the other birds use? Hey, my buddy here, he'll give you a hint. Hey, yep, that's I like that guy here. This old boy here, uh, we do support great people all over the world. These guys are our Gordo line. Uh, many of the stores have them. They are hand-carved in Bali. So when you buy one of those from a bird store, you help the bird store and you help those people in that village in Bali. So uh, Kaylee and you, and you ladies, you help us know who wins. And I'm going to just keep uh, going along. And when there's a question I need to answer, somebody slide that rascal to me and I'll do it. But uh, if you haven't figured it out now, I'm sure somebody said woodpeckers. Woodpeckers open many, many, many of the households out in the world. And this guy is one of my favorite. The, the fire line folks don't like him, but he's the red-headed woodpecker. Okay, a little more shy. Don't be upset. upset. You won't get him in town a lot. Uh, I am going to use some birds. One of my uh, favorite, favorite people in the world is Margaret Cobain up in uh, northern uh, U.S. who hand cars, hand paints these birds, and then we have them reproduced. And uh, she does these little ornaments here, and uh, they're really good. National Wildlife Federation does them. So I'm going to use them. I, I say, what can I use for uh, visuals? These are so good, uh, you know, that the NWF use, sells them. So uh, this is this guy. One of the other guys, my favorite little guy, is this little guy here. This little guy here is the downy woodpecker. 
The downy woodpecker is one of the first birds to go to your feeder. He'll, he'll come up and look around and he'll say, hey, this is pretty good stuff here. Uh, I got it. You know, they must be shopping down at their local wild bird store. And uh, he'll tell the other guys, and you will notice that birds feed in flocks. That's something to teach your children, particularly in the wintertime. They uh, go around together and they eat together once they find. And CJ L-E-X-O-W, you just won something. And we'll be posting what you win online. And we won't be put have time to put every single thing because I'm holding up a lot of stuff. But we will just post, uh, and I'll try to say the... Uh, the perhaps the prize winners. You run my big buddy woodpeckers, what they tell me. But let's keep giving you hints. So uh, some of the different woodpeckers that there are, you know, you got the yellow-bellied sapsuckers, you got flickers, all those guys are coming in. So uh, that's a fun group to, uh, to be working with. Uh, your local wild bird store has houses for all of those. Uh, different birds take a different house. It's a different size hole. Uh, there is a great book that you, they can get if they don't have it. It's called the Original Birdhouse Book from Birdwatcher's Digest. All kinds of great plans. If your husband's handy, I ain't, man. I bet I'm these pictures up here behind me. And speaking of them pictures, somebody gets this book. If they can tell us why on Facebook Live all the words are backwards. Beats me. I just know it happens. But this whole family of birds, if you could read that one behind me, a lot of these birds we're talking about right now, I call the clingers. But they can hang on really good to little feeders or on the limbs, all that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll go from there, but let's keep learning stuff, okay? And uh, one of the things you can do before we hop into them uh, uh, clinging birds only and, and the cavities is you can help all kinds of birds with nesting material. And I know on the web all the time it's saying, oh, you can use dryer lint. I would sure tell you not to. And think about it. A lot of the clothes we wear, they got unnatural materials in them. And most of us are sure saying now, let's, let's don't use that dryer lint. Uh, we happen, of course, we got a product, but you can make this stuff, some of it yourself, but it's nesting material. And there's over 50 kinds of birds use this nesting material. It includes, give you a hint of some stuff if you want to make your own, natural wool, feathers, hemp, cotton, string, but not too long. Long pieces, you end up hurting the birds. They could get hurt, caught up in there. Uh, and alpaca. So we actually put alpaca in there. We, uh, we used the uh, alpaca that they were going to throw away anyhow. It wasn't good enough to make your warm little booties with, that sort of thing. But uh, got any questions in there, ladies? Somebody hand me one. I want to make sure I'm listening to the crowd. So send your questions in and uh, I, will, I will do my best to answer some. So a uh, good thing here as far as nesting material. Right after I did my prayers this morning, I always say nature is a stress reliever from God. Take time today to listen to the birds sing. Wow, was there ever a time we needed some stress relief? So take that. Just take the children out on the porch. Just sit there maybe a certain time each day, and you'll be amazed what's going on. Tell you what, love is in the air. Yep, uh, the males are singing loud. And uh, Bridget, Bridget, G-R-U-E-N-D-E-R, -E -E you win a, uh, the bird book. And those of you that aren't in our area, we're going to ship them out to you. And those of you that are, uh, we'll ask you to pick them up at Songbird Station, and they'll be there for you. But uh, anyhow, forgot what I was talking about. Oh, love is in the air. Big prize here. Going to give a, uh, a uh, nesting reef, and I'll show you that in a minute, to the bird. those of you that pick up on which bird right now, if you keep feeding and you need to, because spring birds are hungry, and they need it for their babies. You'll see the... Uh, parents of the woodpeckers bring their little babies to eat suet. And we're going to be posting a recipe where you can make your own suet. Now, I'm telling you, we did that with the grandkids the other week, and it's fun. You ain't going to save a lot of money if you're going to have to go out and buy it. But maybe you can use some of the stuff you got in the house now to, to make suet. So we'll, we'll be posting that. But somebody tell me. Okay, pretty good hit there. What bird, what the, the male will reach over and give the female a bite. Now, my wife says he does that until, you know, he gets what he wants, and then that's over. But uh, somebody said, how does one keep redheaded woodpeckers from pecking my roof and gutters? Hey, them woodpeckers, they like to say, particularly some of the bigger ones, this is my area. So they will peck on your, on your roof and your uh, thing, and it's their way of drumming. It won't last forever. Uh, you know, if they start making uh, a hole or something in your house, you need to cover that. And, and I'll post some uh, things on it. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I will answer that question for you online afterwards. Uh, the biggest thing is uh, just 
a lot of times if you sit in your house, he's telling you might be some bugs behind that siding and stuff. So he might be a wake up alarm on that sort of thing too. Great question. Keep them coming. So we were talking about loves in the air. Right after I was uh, sitting my prayers, I was, I was thinking we make a beautiful, beautiful nesting reef out of that nesting material. Only problem is it takes quite a good bit of time. And unfortunately, like many places, we've had to cut back. But if you guys support your local wild bird store and support us, we'll be able to hire those people back. So we're going to sell the reefs we got made up now if you're not too crafty. But from now on, in the wild bird stores, hell, heck, I didn't even know it until put it in my brain about an hour ago. Uh, we're going to start selling a kit. You get the, the reef holder deal and you get all the stuff that's in here. And all that stuff is in that bag I talked about. So a great new product uh, that we're going to talk about. Janelle... Rip it to you. You won uh, the Cardinal, and somebody asked, should bird houses be cleaned out every year? Do wrens do it by themselves? Great question. Absolutely, they should be built out, cleaned out, for a couple reasons. You know, that level keeps going up in that house, then some predator comes in there and might grab them and eat them, and you don't want to do that to your babies. We talked last week about how to keep your house safe from predators, so go back and look at that bluebird session. I talked way too long, not going to do that this week. Uh, but look at that session and you'll see how you can uh, can help them birds. So, uh, and wrens don't do it by themselves. And speaking of wrens, I'm going to have Becky hand me a, a house or two here in a minute. Uh, but uh, wrens fill everything up all the way around the house. You don't want to let them do that. So put one on one side of the house, one on the other. That way that you can get more wrens. And you know a wren is going to give you good luck. And I'll just take that first one there. i got to say hi to mom because she's watching. We created a little house called Martha's Mailbox Wren House. Pretty cool little thing. Somebody tell me what size hole is supposed to be on this old boy. And I hope, I'm pretty sure all my guys are doing what we're supposed to. And all these products uh, that you see are um, that I hold up pretty much on the wooden stuff are made right here in Mexico, Missouri. So you're helping keeping our workers going by buying these. So God bless you. So uh, that deal there is going on. They say, how do you put the nesting material out? Great question. If you have suet cages, uh, they're a great, great way to do it. We actually have a birdie bell. I put nesting, and I don't have it here, but look up birdie bell uh, at songbirdstation.com. Remember, you can get that thing at your store. You can put it in there, I, and then I put oranges in there. I'm giving you a little, little sneak uh, head time thing. Oranges are good for Orioles. So we're going to talk Orioles in two weeks. I'm changing the schedule around. They say, what would, you, what would it be good to put wood shavings out for nesting? Okay, good question. In some of the different boxes, wood duck boxes, some of the woodpecker houses and all, put nest. Oh, here my supplies are falling in on me. Sorry about that. Uh, you put nesting material or you put wood chips in there. Trying to keep it short, so I will post the answer online of what houses you do that to. Rim size hole. Nobody got it yet? Okay, i tell you what it is. It's an inch and an eighth. Somebody did. Oh, somebody did. So Somebody's going to win, they tell me. And another money saver, if you've got a house, and you know them old woodpeckers, they go around, they peck holes bigger. we got these little metal porter protectors. Tune in to last week's, we talk about them. we got them for woodpeckers, chickadees, inch and quarter for chickadees and titmice. So, again, it's in the birdhouse book I talked about. You can find more stuff at birdmanmail.com on all I talk about. Anything you see there, your local wild bird store can get. But remember, not everybody's got a big old warehouse like I do, so it may take a day or two. And uh, Indar will drop ship it for them to you, or uh, they're going to have something like it. So, uh, wren protectors there, and then, of course, we had bluebird house portal protectors. Got them for the east and the west. And hi, guys, out west. I know i got some of you from uh, Arizona and some of you from California tuning in. Do all birdhouses have cleanups? You buy a birdhouse, birdman, mail sales, and I think that'd be true for every local wild bird store. It has a clean out, or they ain't calling it function, okay? And it's not going to be metal because you're going to cook them. It's not going to be glass uh, because you're going to cook them all the houses i hold up here you find on our website you find in your local wild bird supplier they're going to be safe and you want to have that clean out so great question whoever asked that okay so uh nesting material thing uh squeeze birds i was going to let you see another bird i love these birds they're from wild republic somebody tell me what this bird is i like this bird a lot he's actually in a kit we're going to talk about kids things we got a kit where your kids can build this recycled plastic house. I think Kaylee's posting online, or if she hasn't already, my three grandsons and us. We found out that Aunt Becky's a heck of a lot builder, better builder than, than, than Grandpa. Got a lot of little stickers in there and stuff. Uh, 
we had a lot of fun. Uh, it had butterflies and, and different bugs on there. So we talked about each one of those as we put the stickers on. So ask your local wild bird supplier for that recycled plastic birdhouse kit. And we got a bird feeder kit too, the same way uh, that uh, that old bird man Mel talked about. So anybody get this? Uh, send your answer in. That's a chickadee. This is a black cap chickadee. Now those of you to the West, uh, we'll have information on online for you. Somebody said, do I recommend uh, painting cedar birdhouses? I don't know why you would. Cedar to me is my favorite. Cedar and recycled plastic. Uh, and, not the, uh, and they said are the ceiling of them. Uh, there is some data on the darkness and some bluebird houses, but in general, let's keep it simple. I would say no, you don't paint them. And uh, they're handing me, of course, thousands of notes now about everybody winning. And I'm not going to try to keep up with that. But we'll be posting a list online after this of everybody who wins. Okay? And I'm going to give you another guess here. Biggest woodpecker in most areas. Okay? Somebody tell me what this old boy is. Okay? Miss Becky, you won't give me that tail prop suet feeder over there. We're going to talk about feeding. We're going to mix things up because, boy, time goes so darn fast, but I love it. A couple of my other favorites. This old boy here. Somebody tell us what he is. You're going to win a prize. Okay. Okay. And then, of course, I showed you this guy. He's my favorite. He, you know what? You can teach kids a lot with birds. This guy goes up, gets one bite, gets another. Okay. Miss Becky was waving at me over here. I asked her for a suit. Tell prop. Then I didn't get it. We talked about this big old boy. Well, we make one even longer for that woodpecker, and you, I'm sure somebody's answered by now, but woodpeckers, you know, you watch them, they go bouncing up that tree, and they use their tail, you know, it keeps them steady. Well, this here tail prop thing keeps it where they can feed really, really easy, so a great feeder. You're seeing in there pine tree farms, peanut butter, suet cake. There's some great cakes sold by all our wild bird stores. This is my favorite. We use this in Songbird Station. I feed it peanuts, peanut butter, suet, no fillers. So you don't really like that, birds like it. Again, you can make your own, but you can't, you know, it's gonna be for fun with the kids, but neat feeder there, okay? So these are two of my favorite. This one here, he's the tufted titmouse, okay? I think he just looks like a miniature cardinal, all dressed up in really nice gray. Some people sound crazy. But, uh, and then this guy here, what's this guy? You know, sometimes I think they party all night, they do it because of what they do, yep. And he's got a buddy that's got red on him too, okay? So tell us what this old boy here is. He's going head first down the tree, okay? I don't know why he just ain't got with it, but that's the way God has him. He's going down, okay? So some fun things there. You do need, I said earlier, you do need to keep feeding the birds. And you say, oh, budget's a little tight. Well, the secret is some tricks. This little guy here, my favorite feeder, call him the cleaners only. Just the little bitty guys. Yeah, once in a while, a starling or a grackle will try to get on there. But just a little bit of old birds can get in there. Really, really like this feeder. We, we got all kinds of pictures. I'll be posting photos. So what money you put in here goes to the birds you want. And we'll be teaching you in the days ahead to how they keep squirrels off these boogers too. And we'll have to talk about that in a little bit. Okay? Well, what am I putting in there? Whoa, stuff's the falling everywhere. I'm putting kernels in mine because my wife don't like stuff on the deck. You could put you could put just straight sunflowers on it too, but uh, we call ours hardy hearts. But people all over the country, your stores got them. And if your wife say, "Oh, don't feed the birds; that stuff's going to sprout," well, all the stores have a no waste, or we call ours a shell-free deluxe mix, so that it doesn't sprout in your yard. Again, helping get the birds you want to only eat safflower seed. Uh, the songbirds you love like this, but I find my grackles, my English sparrows. Oh, we talked about them last week. Tune into to the bird bluebird session. Uh, you'll hear about those. But they don't like it, and really my squirrels don't like it. So remember safflower from your local store, okay? But the other favorite I got, whoa, boy, everything's going everywhere, is these here peanuts. Peanuts are a great thing. And Ms. Beck, would you hand me that uh, Aspects peanut feeder over there? Folks at Aspects supply many, 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 if not all of our wild bird stores. And this peanut mash feeder made over in uh, Rhode Island, just the cat's meow. We do want it, birds can get diseases just like our people. So remember, clean feeders every 30 days. Drop the bottom. This thing is so easy to clean apart. They have trays that go with it. Don't need it for these clinger birds, but for other feeders they sell, they got a great tray. And back, give me that old uh, that birdhouse cleaner over there. 
uh, you know, one part bleach, nine parts water is what I recommend for cleaning. Our, a lot of the stores sell our birdhouse and feeder cleaners. We got them for all sorts of products. So see your local bird supplier that they're going to have good products for you to use. We'll put these peanuts in that aspect thing and it's going to do good. What I got for a question here, it said it had a bluebird pair partially dusted a month ago, activity stopped, no predators, any thought to get them back. Well, God and the weather changes it a lot of times. And, you know, what's going on right now, the old boy's taking the girl around and saying, hey, how about you and me here? And maybe some other boy had a better place. And she decided to go over there. Uh, maybe they were scared by a predator and you don't realize it. But it, in many cases, I saw some nesting start. And then, you know, the female doesn't, and all the species, doesn't nest until it's, it, it's later on. Okay, do Other thing, another tip to save... Uh, feed is I want to show some products from a company called Brome. I love these guys. And one thing you need to know, whether it's Sheltered Ring Optics or Brome, uh, they are the best. Uh, all of our bird stores have the best price in the nation. Nobody will beat their price. They make a suet proof feeder and just keep them coming back. I really like that. And they make all sizes. And it's I promise uh, they're, all these companies are helping give this away. So that's why I'm holding up so much. They make little ones, a couple different versions here. And they make a big old honker, which is my favorite feeder. Now, again, not everybody's budget can afford one or whatever. But if you want to make sure that the birds get your seed and not the squirrels, Squirrel Buster. Guaranteed squirrel proof. Available at every wild bird supplier in America independently. Go to them big old boxes. They ain't going to have this thing. So you want to go in to your local independently owned wild bird supplier for these things. Okay. Good, good product. I love those guys. Going to have a, a several books posted on the website. Love this little book about wood ducks. Do what you to know later on in the year. We're going to have a session on wood ducks. I'm going to have one of the best experts in the world helping me. We're going to have one on owls also. So going to just keep doing this a uh, pretty good while until you guys say, I don't listen to old Birdman Mel no more. So uh, some fun things going on. Beck, I want to get that suet log over there. I want to make sure they know about suet logs and suet cakes. Just bring the things I'm using, the stuff with things in it. I love these logs. It's a way you might, you know, got something to do, get the saw out, cut a piece of wood, put a hole on it. If you're in the city, you ain't got no wood, your bird stores can do it. But these things are plugs we put in here. And can you imagine? I know this happens. Charlie's going along with Fred and says, hey, Fred, pound your beak in here. This stuff is good. And you don't have to look for them bugs everywhere. Just eat this good stuff here. And we make them at, as we do seed with hot pepper in them to keep uh the, uh, the other, you know, the birds don't taste that pepper, but oh boy, that squirrel gets looking at it. He says, oh, I'm out of here. I don't like that Mexican stuff. So uh, good thing here. We make them things. You can tell they like this one. I think the birds say, man, that's like a payday to me. These, this is a seed log that we get from the pine tree farm guys. I love this guy. And you got different sizes of them. And then you got a cake feeder over here. This is a woodpecker uh, cake from the pine tree folks. And, uh, you know, the birds come and peck on this. We got some that's for all kinds of birds. I have my cardinals eating from this right now. Everybody, uh, good stuff. And that's what they sell at the wild bird stores. They sell good stuff, not cheap stuff. Although it, it's guaranteed to be competitive with anybody in the market, but it's quality. That's the word I should have used. You get the best value for your money at your local wild bird supplier. And that, of course, includes Songbird Station. Well, we rambled all around, so uh, let me see where in the world are we. Information sources. We do have in the Columbia market, uh, let us know. We got tips for attracting clingers and different birds. Those are all up at Birdman Mail. Again, anything you see there, local store, they got it. We got Songbird Station News. I know most of your local wild bird stores put out something like this. Either most of us are probably going to go to internet only right now. So make sure you, you're checking with your local folks. And then some great books Eastern Nest. I love this book. You can help ID Nest. Birds of Your State, Birds of Missouri. I like this book a lot. Uh, and then the folks at Lures and different companies have these quick little fold-out guides. This one happens to be down on the golf course, uh, golf shore. And hi, guys, down in Florida. I know I've got some of you tuning in. So we got one for everybody. And uh, before we get off of this thing, I want to ring my bell. We're going to hit a couple more kids' ideals, and we'll be posting them. This Beck, I'll need a couple things. This little bell I'm using, you ring it when you feed your bluebirds. When you put mealworms out and you go back and read that, they will start coming when you ring the bell. I think it's great for when it's time to start school with all of us homeschooling. And you, ain't, you go look on the internet for bells and, oh my God, they were high. And your local wild bird store can get you one of these. What I didn't want to miss is we just discovered these little bitty playing cards. They're really, really cool. They got birds on them. 
And, you know, they're going to only sell for like two bucks at your local wild bird store. They didn't got them yet. We just put them out this week. But in a week or two, they're going to have these little things. They got 52 different photos of birds on there. Really cool little training thing. There's logs, nature log, bird log, you know, cool ways to keep track of stuff as a family. You got cooking for the birds. That's a really cool thing. So uh, really neat things going on as far as different little books your, uh, your store can uh, you can get from your local store and crosswords. You know, my mom likes to uh, do these other number things, but crosswords for the birds, really cool stuff. So just some things that you can get from your local store. Give me that there old house kit. We also have got our fact to crank it up, making inexpensive chickadee red house kits. So uh, see your local wild bird store. We're going to have special on these that I know they'll have too, where you can build your own house with, for your children. And all of them follow the guidelines of what we talk about. Okay, fun stuff there. Man, I changed this around, but it don't matter. Foods, I don't want to forget this. It's not just about what you buy. It's about plants. This is a cone flyer here. Got it from my local nursery, Callaway uh, Farms uh, here in Mexico. I uh, also encourage you folks over in Columbia to keep supporting Giving Gardens and Strawberry Hill. Giving Gardens has a drive through because of their sheltered workshop thing, but uh, they're all great folks. And next week, you're going to see tons of their plants where I'm going to teach you what plants really do good as far as attracting uh, uh, hummingbirds. So tune in for then. I'm running about as long as we wanted to go. Uh, you know, little plants like Coreopsis, uh, uh, the uh, natives. I do want to make sure I sneak that in. Another money-saving tip, let your yard get the five inches. Cut it high. Reach out to your local garden center or lawn care or a hardware store. See if they don't have some corn gluten product. I don't put chemicals on my yard. My kids can lay there and people wonder why do you have so many birds and butterflies, Mel? I think that's the biggest reason. So corn gluten, cut that yard high. You can roll around with the grandkids all you want. And when you decide to plant, plant native. Think about it. God put them plants here. Hey, they might do better. And by the way, those plants then have bugs that come to them that if you go chemical free, I tell you what, in my yard, the birds take care of the bugs. So give it some thought. I think it's a really, really great money-saving tip for you. Okay. Uh, suet, I did want to grab a, a app. You know what a suet cake looks like. I showed you that one thing. They do have plugs, all that stuff available too. Talked about mixes. Mmm, look at this. I'm going to eat this later for a snack. Chickadee mix, uh, woodpecker. We call it Klinger's uh, Delight or something like that. I'm nervous. I can't remember some stuff. But all your stores have got a bird. It's about mixing the feed that that bird likes and putting it in a feeder that that bird likes. That's what a bird store knows that them big old boxes don't know. So turn, email and tune into them and uh, we'll talk about owls uh, again in a different session. We'll be uh, putting an expanded session on there. And forgive me for going so fast. Miss Kaylee, I think it's time to tell who won the grand prize. So whoever that is, uh, I don't know what rules Miss Kaylee put up, but you need to be telling us about, hey, you want these things? Ooh, oops. Where have I got? Yep, there you go. If you want these good $160 pair of optics, get in there, get your name in. She's going to be telling you that you won uh, and posting it, I believe, on, on Facebook. Got to tell you, folks, I hate to admit it, I wasn't a Facebook person for two weeks, so I'm kind of learning as we go. So if you're feeling bad, don't, don't feel bad. I do want to make sure you know that next week on the hummingbird thing, lots of fun things for kids. We're going to talk about this little hummingbird ring. You can get... You can look, we'll be, it's on our websites. You can see my grandkids feeding these things on their finger. Maybe not right here at first. You want to put these out. We'll tell you how. But uh, for sure, as the year goes on, love this little feeder. Make these things here in Mexico. Tongue goes in there. You, how many bird tongue goes way back here? So that's what I'm going to tell you. you. Tune in next week. You're going to learn more. Okay? So fun things there. And uh, if you got some questions, let me see. When do you put up a Purple Martin house? How, take, how, how tall a pole? We well, used to say it had to be 15 foot high. We've learned in the warehouse uh, that we got them down to eight, nine feet all the time. You got all the way to the end of April to put out a Purple Martin house. What's the best product to keep the squirrels off feeders? Baffles, metal baffles, and we'll tell you about that. You're gonna have to tune in for the squirrel proof session. But you gotta keep, remember, squirrel jumps up four feet. He'll jump out 10 feet. So put your pole way out there in the yard, but where you can see it, and we'll tell you some other tips. What's that? One minute. And then how do you keep the red-headed woodpecker? Any seed feeders, uh, eaters, I guess, that don't eat black oil, all the birds you really like eat black oil sunflower. So for a budget stretcher, but it's about not all black is the same. Most all of us wild bird people, we have our bushel weight tested and we have it double cleaned 
So there is a huge difference in seed. Little Chickadee will tell you which seed's best. Put out some of that old junk them other guys sell and put out some of uh, this good seed and he'll come and pick up that heavy one, okay? Uh, Nicholas, you want a Chickadee? Uh, is this feed a raccoon resistance? I tell you what, raccoons, ain't much you can do except put them on a heck of a baffle or take them in at night or trap them and go take them to somebody you don't like, I guess, I don't know. I hate taking them to anybody, but they're telling me I gotta be quiet one of the things I want to make sure is we hope we made you smile today. So uh, we'll be announcing all the winners online, I guess, including the optics guy. I was hoping we could do that one online, and, but uh, it'll be there. Stay watching, and uh, thanks, and I'll see you next week, same time, 10 o'clock Central Standard Time, and we'll talk hummingbirds.